Definitely appreciate you. For uh, sure. For those of you tuning in live and that may watch this rebroadcast, this is a uh, rapper, actor, Marcus Clay. Um, he built an empire of his own and mogul. And I'm so glad to have you a part of the Faith and Finesse series. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, so the whole intention of this series is to basically talk about the faith and finesse of just being on an entrepreneurial journey. Um, right. I mean, most of us know, like, if you're deciding to work in entertainment, you're asking to be an entrepreneur because you essentially want to use your talent and monetize that full time. So right. there's a lot of pits and falls that come with that. And, um, it, it's been great listening to everybody's stories and just being able to give back to others, you know, it's also Precious Appreciation Month, right. National Holiday. Everybody don't know about it, but um, oh, okay, okay, you know, okay, opportunity to give appreciation and you know just to be able to build community and empower people in this time. I think everybody's looking for guidance and really wanting to take action. And so I'm like, well, I know I have gems to share. I've connected with people on my journey and want to share that. So, um, so yeah, that's why we're here. So I'll start with a moment of gratitude and just thank God for bringing us all here. I hope everyone that's a part of this conversation be able to pull what they came here to receive and that they feel empowered, inspired. Um, I pray that this is a very transparent, comfortable conversation and that um, we just really engage in this dialogue in a way where we are being able to empower and strengthen people's minds, hearts, and really continue to just push through the pain to their purpose. Jesus name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. So, excuse I, excuse the noise in the background. I'm in the studio, so hey, it's a lot good. of traffic. All right, good. Bro. That's why, like, I when we were waiting, I was like, let's just jam his music while he's in the studio. I'm like, y'all just chill out for a sec. So right, right, all right. Good. My fault. I was trying to finish up some things. Nah, but, all good. So I mean, just to kind of set the foundation, um, I'd say like Marcus, we met probably 2006. Sixteen, yep, sixteen. And I want I think at that time, um, you were working on several different projects. Um right. but I just kinda like cling to you and your family just naturally. And right, right. kind of built a, a bond, uh, a brother I don't know what you call brother sisterhood. I don't know what that what that word is. Yeah, like a um like a brother sister relationship. Yeah. Sister. So um I've just been grateful to kind of see some of the behind the scenes of what kind of goes on as an artist um right. as a, Houston as a, as a black artist as a young artist there's so many different right. uh dynamics that that's playing uh in your favor as well as against you and the way you're being able to just balance that and keep pushing forward is very right. honorable um right. so I yeah I guess I just wanted to take some time to just give appreciation to you um Thank you. and then also um, also setting the tone of like, why do you feel like we've decided to, you know, maintain this relationship? You know, relationships come and go, but you identify certain value ones and you're like, I'm gonna nurture this one. So, right. of that on how we've been able to maintain this connection. I mean, you know, basically we, uh, we have the same goals and, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to be successful, you know, and we all have the tools and we all have the, the mindset to be able to adapt to any situation and, and, and go through the trials and tribulations to become successful. So I feel like, you know, we all want the same thing and we're all good people. You know, we all got cool spirits and, you know, we all, you know, we're all the same from the same city. So it's relatable and, you know, it's, um, I feel like that plays a, a big part in it. Yeah. We, we can relate. And so I recently went to go see, well, there's a drive-in movie here in Houston now. And I was like, okay, Houston trying to have some, more diverse attractions and so i seen that I was see was brown sugar so yeah yeah okay. honor brown sugar i'll ask when did you fall in love with hip-hop man um when i first heard tupac all about you the second song on his album all eyes on me the second the second record on there i was like three years old and i remember hearing it you remember and I was three year old memories Nah, definitely, for sure, yeah, for sure. Believe it or not, I, I, I swear to God, um, I just fell in love with the tune. The tune sounded alphabetical almost. Every other city we go, if you don't know, look it up. All About You, Tupac Shakur, Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, classic. That's that's really when I fell in love with, with rap, honestly. Crazy, and like now, yeah. it's really just like your full-time career. So right. 
within doing that, when did you, when do you feel like you adopted an entrepreneurial mindset? Was there any situation where you were like, man, like I'm low key a business now? Like, when do you remember any types of conversations or any events that took place when you really were like, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, this is a business. At a young age, you know, when I, um, when I, when I seen the correlation of, you know, you could, you could do this and you can make money from it. You know what I'm saying? But I've always tried to maintain the passion. So the money could come naturally. You know, I, didn't, I, I, I never did it for the money, you know? So I realized it was a business from, from the jump, you know, having conversations with my mom, like, you know, you got to do certain records to appeal to certain audiences to sell. And, you know, um, you know, you could, you could come up with your own creative merchandise and people could buy into that. So I learned about the entrepreneurial side at a young age, like I would say like nine or 10. Wow. So yeah. I guess moms played a really big role in that. Oh yeah, for um, sure. My mom. You the game and just business in general. Um, right. I think just having that level of protection is important. And a lot of people don't have that. And just even with how the industry's moving, what's your whole take right now? Like how things have shifted? Cause I mean, you fall in love and hip with hip hop at age three with Tupac days to like 2020 and where music is today. Like, how would you describe that shift? I mean, all, all shifts are good shifts. You know, like when hip hop first, you know, came, came into the picture in 1979, it was a different sound. You know what I'm saying? The Sugar Hill games. Oh, my fault, my fault, I, I was getting a call, my fault. The Sugar Hill Gangs, you know what I'm saying? They didn't sound like Run DMC who came a couple years after those guys, you know what I'm saying, in the mid 80s and then in the early 90s, that's when the boom bap, East Coast sound really played and, you know, really came into the picture. So I feel like, you know, the same thing with the 2000, early 2000s. I feel like all change is, uh, is good change, you know, because everything can't stay in the same box. You, know, you got to be able to pick and choose and be creative and um, you know, just express your, uh, your art different. So I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a good change. Yeah, so, I mean, with time. how have you been able to pivot within the change and the sound of music? Um, I know that's a pivot within itself with inspiration of you, you know, more so your inspiration comes from when early on with hip hop. And so as it's evolved and changed, how have you been able to pivot in that space? Right. Just by um, paying attention to it and staying consistent, you know, staying in the studio, staying working, um, stay, staying active as far as just watching how the game changes and, you know, all the moves being made and just figuring out how I could fit myself in by um, staying creative. You know, um, I feel like it's important to try to master everything and anything you do with all elements. Like, if you're a rapper, you know, try to do more than one sound, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it's beneficial, especially in this time. For sure. So for those of you that don't know, Marcus, how old are you? I can't get the people to know. Because they probably don't know. 20, 20 years. This man is 20 years old. And as y'all hear how he is speaking and how intelligent he is, how well versed he is how confident he is and you started got really started in the industry at what age 10 11 10. um i mean been on tour with mindless behaviors been recognized by freaking scarface master p sway right. Right. so you can definitely google him and research him he has his digital blueprint is crazy has you know worked on set alongside sana lathan um and cloak and dagger that was definitely i was very surprised how much i enjoyed that series right yeah I, no, I really, that's, really that's great that. so i really want to talk more so about your uh i guess what that what that pivot was for you just being a young child and then like going on tour like you were on tour at what 11 12 that's insane yeah i, I um i did some spot dates for lupe at 10. um lupe was my mentor at 10 from 10 you know, to like 11, 12, for sure. Um, um, then at 11, I did the whole Generation Lasers tour for Lupe's album, Lasers. So that was 45 cities. And then when I was 12, I did the first leg of the first Minus Behavior tour. Then when I was 13, I went on the second Minus Behavior tour. So definitely got tour experience. And I mean, it was, it was just a dope experience being on stage every night, just getting better with performing and making that connection with the crowd. So. Yeah, that was 
that was that was dope. That was crazy. So I know you were like hella young when this was happening, but are, are there any sure. crazy tour stories that you can remember? I'm sure like the fandom of just girls in general was crazy. So Man. with heavy around that time, so I know things were kind of like what's going on. Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Uh, shout out Milwaukee. It's one of the most turned up cities I've ever been in. I swear. I I was I, I was fresh off the stage and I was just playing the side of the stage and watching the next performer or whatever. And I remember just trying to sneak into the crowd and I had my hood on, but I guess they noticed my hat that I had on stage and everybody just went into a frenzy. I'm talking about they ran up, tackled me. I'm signing autographs and I'm talking about it's 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 pandemonium. Like everybody screaming like little girls, like it was just crazy. Now I remember being 12, like, man, like this, this, I want to keep like, I want to, I want to keep making that connection to people. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you could be the spark in somebody's life. You could be the inspiration in somebody's life. Yeah. And it was just dope to make people, you know, connect with you in that way through your art. So. Yeah. And I art. know you have like an old soul and you're very wise, but how were, were there any moments where your mom had to like sit you down and be like, okay, let me explain this to you. Or, or were you just, I feel like you were just observing and just kind of knew how to how to move. But I guess mentally, from a development perspective, how did you process that you're on tour? You're now being, you're now this big fan. You now have all these people that know your name and traveling and there's just so many different layers to it, I feel like as a child. And so the fact that you're able to manage that, I'm like, mentally, where was your, where was your mind at at that time? I mean, honestly, it was always natural. You know, I, I um, of course, you know, being a kid and just being a student of life, you bump your head with anything. So, you know, thank God I had my mom there to tell me, like, you know, you can't just be loose. You know, you got to stay put, you know, because I was 11. I was, you know, running around the stadium, you know, because I was excited. You know, I was a kid. But, you know, of course, your mom, you know, your uncle, my uncle, my mom, my uncle was uh, very, very hands on with me on the road. So, um, other than that, I pretty much just naturally adapted, you know, because I, I used to watch like tour vlogs of like my favorite artists and just seeing how what life was on the road. So I knew what came with it. So um, it was just a natural adaptation for me. Yeah. So where did school play? Did you just go to home? Like, were you just homeschooled or how did that work? Homeschool. Oh. I would um, I would do my work on the road and then I would come back to uh, public school and wouldn't miss a beat. Yeah, this is long. Yeah. yeah. People right now that's grown and still can't manage life <laughs> in general. Right. So right. Um, I know, like I feel like child in our childhood, that's really where we develop a lot of our like core friendships and relationships. And so right. I, I believe like relationships are, are our true currency, and they just make up who we are and really how we're able to create wealth in regards to the network of people that we're connected to. So right. how were you able to manage your relationships? as you were growing as this child celebrity, like what did that dynamic look for you in regards to friendships and real relationships? I mean, just always separating the two and, and, and knowing when to separate the two. You know what I'm saying? It, it was, um, like I said, my mom and my uncle um, played a big part in controlling my mind as far as keeping it positive and, and, and let me know the, the difference between business and and, and, and friendships, you know what I'm saying? Because I was, like you said, I was young, I was a kid. So it was um, basically, it's, it's a time to play and it's a time to chill, you know? So yeah. that was pretty much the motto. So I adapted pretty quick. I had to. You have to ship and you have to pivot in. Clearly right. having the right counsel and the right people around you that you can trust has allowed you to kind of make those decisions and transitions you know, quicker, I mean, everything in life is not easy and transitions right. are definitely the most challenging times having to shift into new environments. And so as your role as, because uh, you're really leading your generation. And so what's your take on how you feel like, I mean, your community, how everyone's pivoting in this space right now with this pandemic? Like what, what have you done or are there any practices or what's been able to, what have you been able to implement to kind of keep your mindset very positive and it's during, you know, this chaotic space that we're in? Man, just um, 
staying active, staying busy on the things I love and the things I know that's gonna benefit me positively. Yeah. You know, like I would, the advice I would give to somebody is just, you know, whatever you wanna do, whatever you're into, whatever you feel like you wanna do for the rest of your life, pay attention to it right now. You know what I'm saying? Learn new things. Um, stay praying, you know, stay exercising. Um, don't panic, you know, just um, know that this time will pass and just stay stay busy during it, during the time doing positive things. That's good. I've definitely yeah. had to stay in prayer. How has how has God and just faith been a played a role in just you? I, I mean, I say life is a finesse, honestly, and it's what you make it. And so right. how has that played a role into the moves that you that you've made so far? I mean, you know, I, I've always believed in having the faith of a mustard seed, you know, it, it, you can have the smallest bit of faith and believe in that and, and that'll be enough. So just always believe in that, you know, the rain will always pass and the sun will come up. You know, it's just like a baby doesn't always stay a baby for this whole life. It grows up, you know, it develops and matures. It, be, it, it, it becomes able to adapt to life. You know, certain things a baby couldn't do at nine months, they can do at nine years. You know, it's just yeah. about growth. So. Yeah. For sure. That's a good analogy. I um, want to uh, go back to just your experience with Shots Fired only because I feel like the role that you played and just the storyline of the show, it was a direct reflection of the world that we live in today in regards Absolutely. to just racism altogether. And I know you have some new music out as well that kind of correlates with the state of America and where we are. Like Absolutely. What experience with playing that role and, and just being a part of showing like this is what this is current. This is like what's happening right now. It was beautiful. It was beautiful to be able to depict something that is a current situation that we're facing as uh, as African Americans, as minorities, you know, um being, you know, you know, the fact being in the color of our skin has been our downfall. So just being able to depict it on side of legends helping me you know, with my emotions and just, because it was real life emotions I was feeling as well, you know, just me being black, a, a young black kid in America, knowing what we face, knowing what we go through, knowing the young black kids in America that we've lost in the past. So it was it was a beautiful experience and um, it was something I'll never forget, for sure. Yeah, so are there any, like, I mean, just based on that experience and you being a part of that show, now you showing up in real life, have you kind of changed up or switched up your behaviors on how you engage with the police or how you avoid them? I mean, it, regardless if we're trying to avoid them or not, they're still going to find some way that we've done something wrong. And it it's tough, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a black man, but since you are, you know, it will be nice to know, like, how your mindset is and, you know, us as women, how we can support you. Yeah, just always be cautious, you know. Um... All cops not bad cops, you know what I'm saying? All, all, all cops not bad cops. You might run into some cops that's some, some a-holes or having a bad day or whatever. But I would say just cooperate, you know what I'm saying? But the color of our skin has been our downfall to the point to where even while we're cooperating, we still, you know, get murdered. So I would just say try to do the best you can and cooperate. But, but that can only get you so far. And that's what's crazy, you know what I'm saying? That's a topic that I could talk and touch on for hours. You know what I'm saying? It, it's really crazy. Yeah, um, so would you say that you feel optimistic about the future of change within that? I definitely feel optimistic. You know, I, I, like I always live, I, I live on the faith of a mustard seed. I feel like change is gonna come, but it depends on how we're gonna play a part in making the change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have to make, we have to play the part. Everybody, the, the world has to play a part. We have to stop judging each other. We have to stop stereotyping each other from, you know, the first, our first sight of somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's what the world is. It's very stereotypical, analytical. Um, and it's been our downfall. It's like, it, it's almost like a divided we stand, united we fall because we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. But it's like society forces us to hate each other, one another, and it's and it's a problem within every race. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is it's it's gets deep. So with you, you know, keeping your ear, ears to the ground and just being a not a knowledgeable and aware of what's going on in the world and society, you also are the leader of your household. 
You know, you have your mom, you got your sisters, you're the man of the house. And so um, do you feel any type of specific responsibility or obligation, you know, as you wake up every day and, and wanting to just to be there and provide for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want my sisters to grow up and be beautiful, successful young women. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I tell them that all the time. I um, try to instill greatness in them, you know, my mom as well. You know, my mom, she 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 is a great mother. You know, she does a great job in raising us, you know what I'm saying? Raising me as a child coming up and raising my sister, you know, uh, plays a big part in everything that we do. So um, I made it my obligation at a young age to try to stay grounded and, and be that figure for my sisters as far as being something in life, being successful and staying down with some, building up a muscle memory almost. And, sticking with it, you know, I tell them, whatever you love, do it. I always ask them, like, what y'all want to be, what y'all want to do, you know, when y'all grow up or right now, what interests you guys, you know, but yeah, I made it my obligation at a young age. Yeah, definitely tapping into those, let, allowing them to tap into their talents, their their passion, right. and letting them know that it's possible. And I right, think right. the fact that you're in the household, it, it shows that it's possible. And so right. with, with you leading the way, I have like the utmost, um joy and, and faith into what the future holds and so to wrap you. up this interview i'm gonna do some quick rapid fire questions so it's kind of like this or that so you gotta pick one okay okay so yeah. basketball or football basketball talk or text talk waffles or pancakes pancakes pineapples or watermelon pineapples Erica or Jill? Uh, bro, that's hard. And you can't you can't pass? Uh-uh. You got a big one. You got a big one. I love you, Jill. Erica. <laughs> Erica. Erica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think I already know the answer to this, but Tupac or Biggie? Pop, pop, pop. And let me explain this. Okay. I look. I really look at them the same. You know, the same. I, I respect and value them the same, just like I do J Cole and Kendrick. Um, but I put Pot over Biggie because it it was just a different impact for me. You know, I, I heard Pot first, and Pot is the reason why I fell in love with music, like I mentioned earlier. So yeah. it's just a slight edge, but both of those guys are great, still great, gonna be great forever. Right. So, and sure. what's your definition of love? My definition of love, love is what you make it. You know, love is, cause you can love somebody tough or you can love somebody gently or you can love somebody from a distance. So love is really what you make it. I appreciate that. Well, thank oh, yeah, for you. Sure. I know you gave us some encouraging words earlier, but if there's any other things you want to share just to, you know, pour some more light into, uh, into everyone and, and going to this year. I still believe that 2020 will be a victorious year. And so Absolutely. I'm asking everyone to just shed that positive light because everybody needs that positive energy right now. Absolutely. Just stay positive. Just um, stay focused. Stay doing what you love to do. And um, don't, don't worry because we're in these times temporarily, man. It's, 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 it's light on the other side. Temporary, yeah. Well, thank you. Are there any other things that you want us to like keep note of or to look out to look out for? I know everyone needs to follow him on social media, Marcus Clay. But is there anything else? Look out for new music. Check out my new single, Champion. Check out my latest one I just dropped on SoundCloud, coming to our platform soon. Allen Iverson. Just stay tuned in, man. We uh we being great. We doing great things. Staying staying active. Awesome. Well, yes. Love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. Probably Monday. Come to on Monday. <laughs> For sure. Love, love. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Bye.